Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models and you've clicked on another talking model segment you're trying to work out what's this all about. Well, every month I have a bit of a fireside or as I call it, just grab a, grab a cup of coffee and we just talk about models, talk about our great hobby. Before I get into this month's discussion, which is about competitions and how I think they're actually really, really good for our hobby, I just want to give a little bit of a channel update. So if you want to skip that, just click on the chapters below, you know, in the play bar or in the description, I'll leave a little link if you just want to skip that little update and want to get into why I think competitions are so good, go ahead, but yeah, grab a cup of coffee, and soon I'll switch and we'll, we'll get rid of this face for radio off and we'll have a look at some pictures instead. Autumn has arrived, or fall, I think you call it up in the northern hemisphere, but it's the other way around, I think you're going for spring, I always get confused with that. But yeah, it's lovely weather, the, it's finally gotten a bit cooler, even though I'm still wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> Um, we don't really have that much of a winter here where I live, but it means less yard work and more bench time and this has got me focused because then I realised, I looked at the calendar and I'm like, oh, it's only a couple of months, four or five months until August where we have our annual state competition, the Queensland Model Hobbies Expo and I really want to compete this year. So this little update is just about how I'm just going to shift my priorities a little bit with the channel. Not much is going to change. Just want to tell you what's going to go on for the next, I think it's 16 weeks after this is out. Okay, because I really want to focus on one particular entry. I've actually finished 10 or 11 models, some of them including, you know, the Tamiya Corsairs. I'll put a picture up there. Um, the, the Aichi Sirian, the MiG-31, uh, the Ravel U-Boat from more than a year ago. Because I didn't get to compete last year. I went to the... The, the thing. And I'll just give you a little background first about this. I started the hobby 2014 uh, and every year I went to the expo. It's held um, a couple of hours away from me. Now it's three and a half or nearly four hours drive away from me. So last year uh, I went but just for the day I didn't compete for a variety of reasons. But this year I'm really gunning to, uh, to, to compete. And I've got one particular entry and I'll show you that in a minute. So here it is. This is the thing I want to finish. And what I'll be doing on the channel is, uh, I had a false start last year. I started this and, and really stumbled with it. Um, but I'm, I've already got into it. I've, I've built the tail. I'll, put a, I'll see if I'll put a picture up here. I've, I've, actually, I've actually got into it. Um, I'm ahead on it. What I'm going to do is about oh, probably five or six maybe log sort of videos where I'll just show you where I'm up to, sh show you what I've got, got achieved for the last couple of weeks. They won't be weekly, they'll probably be fortnightly or so, but that'll be my main build on the channel for the next few months. However, I will have a few things also to show you. So apart from the Super SH-1T as it's called, the Super you know what uh, <laughs> I have the MiG-29, the Ghost of Kiev. I've done part one video, part two is almost finished. Uh, I'm painting the digital camouflage as we speak and that'll be the first other build that I'll be showing very very soon some other things I want to finish and like I said all the stuff I'm going to show you between now and August is stuff I've I've already filmed a lot of it I've already built and painted a lot of it so apart from one thing it's going to be nothing for me new it's all new to you guys I guess but Tank Girl you remember Tank Girl put a picture up of her up there as well um, the turrets painted all the stowage is almost done just need to fix the, the figure up itself I'm not very good at figure painting so I'm getting into that I've got a few other tank related, even though I just did one tank um, related items and a few other little, just odd little pieces, odd little things that I've started and just need to be pushed over the finish lines because basically what I want to do is, I know the, the Academy kit, the C853, is going to be a slog. There's a lot I've got to do to it. If you go watch part one, I'll try to put a link up the top there. It's a damn big kit, very complicated, needs a lot of stuff. To happen to it, so I know I'm gonna I'm gonna stumble again. So I need little tiny distractions, not big kits. <laughs> so I'll get like you know the ghost of, uh, the ghost build. Oh my god, that's taken forever. So I will be showing those um, on the channel between now and and the end of August. But I haven't forgotten some of the requests that you've made, particularly um, the in-flight series. So I did a talking models piece on that a while back. I've already filmed that. I've already filmed the first one or two episodes. I think I'm gonna do five videos in total. Uh, and yeah, that's my passion. I really love displaying models in flight, so I thought, yep, I've got to put it out there, show you how I do it, some ideas that I've got, how to, you know, how to solve some of the major problems we have trying to display them in flight, how to make them look, you know, because they're bloody fantastic flying, aren't they? Let's, you know, let's be real. So I will be doing that series, and like I said, I've already started. The other thing I'm going to be doing, and that's a big request, I got so many comments on the last uh, piece, which was about using oil paints. Now, if you watch my final. ISU 152, the Beast Killer video, 
where I showed you I only used four or five colors to do all the all paint rendering and weathering on that particular kit. So I'm going to expand that into how I use five or seven, if you include a couple of primary colors, just those all paints. And I'm going to do a full tutorial video and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'll be learning a lot too because I really need to work on my color mixes and, and how to get the right sort of temperature, all that sort of stuff. So that's, that's coming as well. I've got that planned uh, and I'm really looking forward and I hope you guys are too. And finally, I do have one build I want to do. I haven't started it, so I hope I can squeeze it in. I have built that particular kit before. It's a special build. Uh, I'm, it's going to be published in mid-July. It's a 30th anniversary. I'll give you a quick clue now. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm dying to get that done. I've been wanting to do that particular build for years now. I, and I really want to do it because it's a special date. It's a, it's a film that's close to my heart. I really love it. So that's definitely going to be on the cards. And if I can, depending on how hard that Academy kit is, I'm going to try to do the Antonov, the big dream. Because um, that's just such a, a beautiful thing. And I've seen some recent artwork done by some Ukrainian uh, kids who have done some beautiful paintings of, of that particular aircraft. And I'd love to incorporate something like that. But we'll see. Um, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I've already got a lot on my plate, but I'm, I'm really fanging to get that done. Anyway, that's where it stands. I know that some of you wanted to see the Great War Hobby, the P40 uh, build. I will be doing that, but after QMHE, so I don't want to get pressure on that. That's, that looks like a fantastic build. Uh, there's several F14s. I've got a few on the shelf up there. I really want to get into it. I've actually bought a few more F14s and 172. So I'm going to do a review on all the 172 F14s that you can, you can get, and I'll show you how I build them. Uh, what else have I got going? Uh, let me have a look. I've got... Oh, some really interesting little things and some really interesting big things. But let's forget about that. Let's just get through to the end of um, yeah the end of August. I'll do another wrap up then, and uh, let's get back to the segment that you clicked on here, and that's talking about competitions, model competitions. Yeah, this is a bit of a hot topic sometimes, um, and a lot of people get their their goat up or whatever you call that. <laughs> they get a bit a bit miffed about it, and that's fair enough. I want to talk about um, competitions and why I personally think that they're the best thing for the hobby. They're, I think they're fantastic. And the, the basic takeaway I want you to, to, you know, after watching this is to treat a model competition like an art show. Okay? That's, that's where I'm going to come, come from. But let's just stop looking at my face for radio. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put some pictures up on the computer. I've got a massive gallery. It's huge. Hundreds and hundreds. Might, might even be a thousand photos of models at competitions, out of, of photos of competitions around the world. So I'm going to talk over them. First of all, let's discuss what actually is a modeling competition. Well, they can be anything from something held informally, you know, every month or so by your local modeling club with a dozen or so entries, right up to an international event with thousands of models. These bigger ones are usually combined with hobby businesses displaying and selling their wares, or there's usually a swap and sell so you can buy some bargains, plus workshops and tutorials held by experts and masters. Now, if you want to find out where a competition is being held in your area, Google is always your friend, but also check out Facebook to have a look at your local modeling clubs. Most will readily encourage new visitors and members and also point you out to state level comps. You don't have to be a member for these larger events usually. For instance, I like to attend my state competition every year here in August. It's called the Queensland Model and Hobbies Expo or QMHE. They usually have about 500 plus entries. Now I'm not a member of IPMS, but they let anyone enter at this level, even me. There's also some major world events. Uh, we've just had the US IPMS Nats held earlier this year in Las Vegas. There was a massive Moson show held a week or so ago in Hungary, which had more than 2,500 entries. And then soon, there's going to be the World Model Expo in Eindhoven, which looks to be the biggest and best model show of the last couple of years. Now, I have to describe the fact that there's, you know, there's some differences between these competitions, and it's usually a cultural thing. You won't no normally find this out unless you go overseas, you know, for the case of Australian modelers. But, you know, if you're in, in Europe and the UK, uh, you'll find that there's a difference. The continental European shows, the emphasis there, it's, it's more on individual craftsmanship and merit on its own versus, say, a direct competition with others. So what they use is what's called an open gold, silver, bronze judging system where they can have multiple winners, per se, and placings in each category or none at all if the work's not good enough, as opposed to a strictly, you know, 
winner takes all, first, second, third only placements where you have these in English speaking countries. This leads to different ways to how to judge models with the first, second, third system mostly using a cutoff method. So if there's any flaws, um, will lead up to a model being eliminated, whereas the gold, silver, bronze method weighs up the total model in terms of you know its creativity, its uniqueness, its craftsmanship, how it's been displayed, how well it's been painted, and so on. Now, there's some regional differences. For instance, at my state comp at QMHE, while they use the first, second, third medals only, they don't usually have a cutoff where you know if one thing is out that's the end of it it won't be um, measured they actually measure up against a variety of conditions both construction and display and i think that's a good hybrid method also some competitions even allow a non-competing individual display or even a work in progress display where no awards are given this sort of different category it encourages more involvement and participation from the modeling community and this is where we see the usual downside and complaints about modeling competitions in general the fact is if you enter your model you will be judged you will be measured and your skill level may be found wanting i know this does not sit well with a lot of people we are a diverse bunch of modelers some of us don't like any criticism whatsoever and i mean after all they say and fair enough it's a hobby they enjoy this outside of the usual day-to-day -day drudgery you know the hectic work schedule dealing with partners family kids annoying customers, co-workers or bosses. So why put yourself through, you know, yet another finger pointing exercise, you know, determines your self-worth. And I totally get that. I can really understand that. It can be daunting to have your model picked over, torn apart, criticized, or even plainly ignored, which this happens a lot, unfortunately, particularly in the cutoff based scoring, particularly when you think, hey, I think I did a better job than someone who say placed. And it only takes that one bad experience at a competition for some modelers to, no, that's it, they swear off competing for life. And sadly, they almost never attend again. This experience can be exacerbated by the medley group of people that attend our model shows. We all know that social media, you know, Facebook and what have you, it amplifies the negativity and it doesn't really create the kind of atmosphere and generally good interaction you get in real life. And you might think, oh, the internet's full of, you know, wankers and idiots and a-holes, but guess what? <laughs> they exist in real life too. So here's my advice. You're going to meet a variety of people at model competitions and you can't lump them all into one negative, hateful pit of despair. It's more like a Venn diagram. Just hear me out for a second. Now you may meet and sometimes clash with some so-called rivet counters who will nitpick a model because of its inaccuracies or the builder's inability to sort it out or indeed when they make their own mistakes like, you know, adding zimmerit paste to a panzer grey tiger or steel chipping a propeller when it was actually wood. You have to understand that there's rivet counters who are genuinely passionate about their subject and are indeed a deep source of knowledge and expertise because of that. And by and large, they're actually pretty good at creating their own highly accurate models. However, there's rivet counters who just want to stir the pot because they can and that's their, well, let's call it unique psychological makeup. Unfortunately, however, some in that former group, are, well, they're a little bit on the spectrum and, and may not be socially adept at telling you why that tiger is the wrong color. And, you know, they think they're, they're generally trying to help you, but it may come across as being a really bad criticism. It's really easy to lump that group into the later group of, you know, a-holes and write off anyone who dares to criticize your model. And yeah, unfortunately, some of those people will become judges and they'll use their rivet counter superpowers to shoot down your chance of getting a medal. And unfortunately, this is going to happen regardless of any sort of points-based or objective system of judging. All the, you know, the hard work put in by other chief judges and, and other people involved who want to see the best models get the gong. Because at the end of the day, we've all got our own opinions, tastes, preferences, and we reflect that no matter how hard we try to be objective got to understand judging is a tough gig there's usually not enough people who put their hand up to help out and they usually spend countless unpaid and stressful hours each you know sometimes going into the night trying to sort out what seems to be an ever-increasing number of model entries and yet sometimes they get it wrong or they overlook something that was obvious after the fact hey it's the nature of the beast we're all human well most of us <laughs> now look my personal opinion when it comes to this uh, when you see the results from competitions, whether you're participating or not, it's like, first, just be happy to be there, okay? Second, hey, get excited if you get a place. And third, just be glad for anyone who wins a gold or that first place. Pat them on the back, well done, okay? And then just move on. 
Now, there's another type of person you might encounter when we're talking about medals, and that's the medal hunter. Now, this is the chap who wants to win with every model that he or she puts in and becomes personally offended if their hard work is not rewarded. There was a recent great meme from a US show of a chap who was trying to explain to anyone who would listen and people who weren't listening to that his number of hours and all those efforts that he did and all the things that he did to that model that he you know rattled off on a list well that has to equate to an award even though there's other entries that might have had better finishes and more creative you know there was also a case uh, there was a fellow from taiwan i think a couple of years ago who entered the melbourne model expo and he was aghast he only got a place he, he thought his meticulously painted aircraft should have got a gold because he recently got one in another competition so he ejected and the judges went, okay, fair enough. We'll point out what's wrong with it. Here's some paint runs. Here's where you haven't masked properly. Here's your orange peel on your surface. Here's your spidery paint splatter. And yeah, here's your misaligned landing gear, etc., etc. So apparently he stormed off before they even finished explaining why he didn't get the gold. Now, I'm guilty of being a metal hunter. I used to do this in the past. I remember I'd work my considerably sized butt off in the week's leading up into a competition, sometimes not stopping till two or three in the morning beforehand, with paint still wet, bringing the model to the show, trying to finish yet another model quickly, usually too tired to enjoy the model, the, the show the next day. It's a pointless exercise, just to say the least. But, you know, just like we come up against the hyper-competitive people in all works of life and other sports and hobbies, modelling's no different. So, look, don't let their exuberance, their obsession ruin your experience. Let's turn this discussion around to the positives. Let's talk about how beneficial competitions are for our hobby and for your own personal satisfaction and enjoyment. I mean, that's why we model, isn't it? So beyond that gang of social misfits and those who think deodorant is just a town in southern France, <laughs> the people you meet at model comps and the interactions you have with them are far more important than winning any prizes. And, you know, talking to folks on the internet will never be the same as actually shaking hands, talking face to face usually in a gaggle together, pouring over someone's model and getting, you know, excited like little kids with all the oohs and ahs and whoa, you know, when we see each other's work. Because nothing beats having a look at another modeler's craftsmanship and creativity in that physical environment. As I said at the start, this is like an art show. You just can't deny the power of a great painting or a sculpture when it's on public display and the atmosphere around it and what it does to the people observing it. Same with our models. Your enjoyment of our great hobby will transform, transcend, and just increase immensely just by attending any model competition. You're gonna get inspiration, you're gonna be excited, and you're gonna get joy, perhaps seeing your favorite subject by somebody else, they bring it to light. Or you watch a master that you've seen before, he, you know, he's explaining his or her process in a workshop. Or you might even get to see their models on display. Or you look at categories you'd never do yourself just to see the diversity and the creativity. For example, I always say that aircraft modelers, you should check out armor and sci-fi models for ideas. Or look at the artistic talent on display by the figure paintings. Figure painters, they're just amazing these days. Most importantly of all, check out the junior categories to see how our younger modelers are doing and seeing how the hobby is actually growing. It's not dying at all. Now, another reason why I think anybody should have a go is it's also great to see the out-of-the-box ideas and approaches. You know, there's new painting and weathering techniques, new styles being developed, fresh display ideas. Whenever I look at the galleries of, uh, you know, overseas or interstate competition models when I can't go to the, the show myself, I'm always looking for something different, and that gets me excited. Now, while this out-of-left-field stuff may not win an award, they keep it interesting, and it would be a bit boring if all the models were just tanks on a plank or aircraft wheels down. So, yes, you might be daunted by having your models judged, but if you don't participate, the hobby itself is missing out and the turnout on the table will diminish over time. So have a go. Like I said, be happy just to be there. Use that massive knowledge base available at the competitions to ask questions of those who've been doing it for an age. You know, how can I improve? Or get inspiration at seeing someone else's attempt at your favorite subject. Don't be hung up on the judging. See the positive side of it all and make some lifelong friends along the way. I hope I've turned some of you back to considering competition modeling. I very much am looking forward to my next state competition in August. Here catch up with friends and indeed some subscribers who recognize me here from the channel. And of course, to display my in-flight aircraft crazy models, even though I almost never get any medals about them themselves, I don't care. I'm just happy to be there. So until next time, happy modeling. Cheers.